We've already introduced the care and string type, but there are some details to them that are worth discussing. One of them is, how do you represent characters and strings that you can't type on the keyboard? Now, there are a number of ways to do it. In some ways, we've seen some of them. If you take and type in a number and then convert it to a character, we can get a character. I happen to pick 32 because I know that that's the number associated with a space uh, in the Unicode encoding. Uh, but for a lot of things, you don't want that. For example, what about tabs or new lines? Uh, there are some special things that we want to be able to put into characters or into strings, and we don't really have the ability to type them into our character or string inside of here. For example, when I hit enter, I hit enter and I don't get a new line. And for this there are things called escape characters. Escape characters in Scala are created by putting a backslash followed by whatever it is that you, uh, the special character you want to create. So a backslash T, one might expect, is actually a tab. Of course it doesn't print out as anything. A backslash N is a new line. At least in this case you can tell that there was a larger space there. We can do these, use these in strings as well. So backslash T, ABC, backslash N, one, two, three, comes out as, and you see that the ABC is pushed way over here because it was a tab, which gave us, in this case, eight spaces out. And then the one, two, three is on a separate line because the backslash N was interpreted as a new line. One of the challenges that this leads to, having escape characters with backslashes, is it turns out if you want to have a backslash in a string, that doesn't work. You need to put two backslashes. Another special character that you might want to put inside of your string is a double quote. And we, can, we have to do that by backslashing the double quote. So to make that clear, this is a... Uh, If I don't backslash it, you can probably tell what's going to happen. That right there closes off the string, and Scala has no idea what the rest of this is. So if I want to include that, I have to backslash it. Now sometimes backslashing stuff can be a pain. Having to put in new lines with backslash in can be a pain. And for that reason, Scala uh, is one of several languages that includes something called raw strings. And a raw string basically allows you to type whatever you want inside of it, and it is just taken as it is. And in Scala, we create raw strings by putting three double quotes in a row. So it turns out the only thing you can't put inside of a raw string is three double quotes, because that will end the raw string. Testing, another line, some things that would be escape characters, and I hit enter, and this comes out I'm allowed to span multiple lines. Note that the backslashes are not interpreted in any way oddly. So two backslashes, for example, is two backslashes. If I want a single backslash, I can just use a single backslash. Uh, in fact, that's one of the most useful things about raw strings is there are situations where, for example, in regular expressions where you have a lot of backslashes, it's really handy if you don't have to put backslashes in front of your backslashes. Another thing that we will run into is the desire to make larger strings out of some of the variables that we have. So we've declared A and B. I do not have a C yet. I believe I have an X uh, and I have an S. If I want to build a large string that includes all of those, I can do it using string concatenation. So I'm basically saying take A and concatenate it onto a space, and then concatenate to that B, concatenate it onto the value of X, and then finally put on the S there. And that will stick all of them together into a string that just includes these uh, different values. As you can tell, that can get a little bit ugly, especially because of all of the 
plus signs and the quotes and if you mess something up if you leave out a plus sign it can be hard to see that you left out a plus sign just to illustrate this when you look at that you it takes a while to notice that the plus sign is missing uh, but if but you get a very odd error message um, that can be hard to interpret for this reason Scala added something called string interpolation into the language and we can do string interpolation by putting in front of our string we put the letter s and then every time we want a variable we can put it after a dollar sign and I could type other stuff I don't just have to put spaces in there yeah. if I wanted to put something that was more complex I don't want a I want like a plus five well if I just do a plus five it comes out as the value of a plus five but if I wanted that to be a 10 and I actually want to do some arithmetic in there I can put curly braces around it and have more complex expressions inside of the string so string interpolation is just a handy thing to be able to do when you want to build up larger strings that include variables or other expressions in them because it's typically easier to read and to work with this than it is to read and work with this.